Hello all. This video will consist of a discussion between myself and Daphne Lawless, which is just the coolest name ever. Daphne is an editor at Fight Back, Struggle, Solidarity, Socialism. Um, I found her work and that site while conducting research for an earlier video on the channel, Left Right Alliance, Marxism, Campism, Alt Imperialism. So I'm going to go ahead and show you some of the, the work that, that I found interesting. So here's Fight Back and some of Daphne's work. Now, all these articles are great. I encourage you to check them all out. I'm going to link them in the description to this audio or, or video that you're watching. Uh, however, you know, I, I think that the the article that drew me uh, to fight back and the one that really had me interested in, in speaking to the person who, who wrote this was this. The red brown zombie plague, how fascist ideas are becoming popular on the left, um, part one. So it's there's a series of, of articles about this. And uh, generally, they, they talk about kind of right wing fascist creep in, into left spaces. And again, I was doing a video on uh, that phenomenon on social media and, and then some of the ideological um, things behind that, aside from just people trying to, to make money on social media. In the preface, some of the articles that were shown earlier are linked here. It discusses uh, conspiracy theories. It goes into some historical red-brown um, alliance stuff. And at the bottom, talks about this idea of geopolitics um, versus solidarity with uh, global people and uh, the introduction of uh, alt-imperialism. So it's a great article. Uh, it's a series of articles. And within it, there are links and, and things to jump to, uh, even keywords. Uh, if you're interested in this topic, it's, it's all over social media if you're on it. So uh, without further ado, I am going to switch over to our discussion. Okay, so <laughs> I have Daphne Lawless here. Um, and I reached out to Daphne because her work was uh, foundational for me when I was doing research. And I began to understand that there are other people who have essentially already done this for me. And I was in some ways reinventing the wheel a little bit or just discovering this information, which is what prompted me to, to reach out to Daphne and ask her if she can come on and explain to me, as well as everybody listening, just what exactly is going on or what has been going on with the left over the past five, mm -hmm. 10 longer years. Yeah. So Daphne, let's just start with an introduction. Why don't we briefly introduce yourself and some of the work you've done, what you're doing now. Okay. Uh, kia ora koutou katoa. Um, as you've heard, my name's uh, my name's Daphne. I'm a descendant of I'm a descendant of white settlers living in Tamaki Makauro, uh, the the city commonly known as Auckland in Aotearoa, commonly known as New Zealand. I have been involved in revolutionary politics in a formal level for about twenty years. Years now, um, I write for the, the I, I write for the website and magazine uh, fightback.org.nz, um, and uh, I have a wife and two ki uh, uh, two kids, uh, and I'm self-employed, and uh, I'm a great devo devotee of the works of Kate Bush, and I'm not sure what else you want to know about me. I I took vocal lessons. Mm -hmm. as an adult to play piano and uh -huh. before stranger things i was a kate bush fan i actually tried to do some male interpretations of her music <laughs> <laughs> you can you can do it with some with with, with some of her pieces yeah <laughs> i mean what a uh, yeah i mean what's his face um brian molko placebo did a pretty good version of running up that hill a yeah. few years ago yeah, yeah, I tried that. Um, mm. My product wasn't as good, but um, <laughs> you can do anything. It's just whether or not it's it's worth listening to. I suppose. Yes, yes. <laughs> but so, yeah, Fight Back is where I found your work. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I think it was linked from some other articles I was reading as well. Mm -hmm. yep. But 
you had now there's a lot going on there as well as as some podcasts to that that i found um you attached to yeah. but uh i think that and correct me if i'm wrong but when, when i was looking back there are older articles um but it, it seemed as if maybe that series about the red brown zombie plague mm. was very mm. significant or yeah. or at least something that um, we, we were able to begin to outline perhaps what was happening. Yeah. Okay. So with that, let me ask you this, because I, I'll introduce that concept a little bit, but I think that the question really is how did I, I found this kind of phenomenon, red brown Alliance is kind of what we're speaking of mm. this idea of why is it when I'm on social media, people who present as being leftists are doing things like promoting right wing conspiracy theories? Mm. Why are they defending um, dictators in foreign countries? Um, mm. Why are they denying atrocities that clearly occurred or potentially doing so via a conspiracy theory route? Um, maybe beginning with in, in my not beginning, but with my experience looking at Syria and then the response to covid, perhaps even mm -hmm. the Canadian truck convoy, but uh, especially yes. with Ukraine. Mm -hmm. um, why is it that these people who are, you know, say have socialists, communists, leftists, et cetera, in their handles on Twitter and are writing articles and making a lot of money on, on YouTube? Why does it seem like I'm watching people that should be on Fox News and and yeah. as that progresses, they actually are on Fox News, many yes. of them on Tucker Carlson. So, so, so I've been trying to dissect that and I've been asking myself, how did we get to this point? Mm -hmm. That's how I found the Red Zombie Plague, which was written a few years ago now. So yeah. before we even get into it, my question to you is what brought you to that phenomenon a few years earlier than me or, or what brought it to your attention? OK, um, well, um, as I think you want to talk a bit about later on, this has been an analysis of mine that's been uh, growing since at least 2015. Um, my the the red brown phenomenon is not a new one it goes all the way back to let's let's face it who was the who was the editor of the italian socialist party magazine in 1915 the answer to that is benito mussolini um there has always been this a fringe of socialist or social democratic politics who have been sympathetic to fascist ideas. And that is because they there's a lack of a strong dividing line between the two. Now, I mean, historically, uh, uh, the, the, I mean, historically, the basis of left-wing and socialist politics has been about working class self-organization. Um, you know, and that goes through social democratic and communist and anarchist varieties. Um, but the problem is you had the so, something that um, socialists weren't prepared for in the years after World War I was the rise of right-wing mass movements. Like in the olden days, the idea of a, a right-wing mass movement would have been considered a contradiction in terms, but I mean, what you had, um, um, and what what you what you had is like fringes of the socialist uh, of the socialist movement who lost faith in the possibility of working class self organization, the, who lost faith in democracy, who lost the faith in the possibility of uh, ordinary people to change the world for themselves decided um that a shortcut uh, that a shortcut or would be appropriate um and uh fascist mass movements right wing mass movements offer a shortcut because they can get support from uh the existing the the, the existing uh ruling authorities in society from the ruling states from uh certain capitalist uh, leaderships now the thing about uh, the thing about red uh, red down politics is it comes out of uh, a despair on one hand this despair on the possibilities of democratic self organization and but also then seeing 
that there's this reactionary uh, mass movement, which is, you know, supported by, you know, big wigs in the state, big capitalists, and that's putting the fear into the liberal capitalist centre. And the essence of red-bound politics today is, I think, this collapse of the, the this collapse of the idea that there's a difference between a left-wing opposition to the neoliberal centre and a right-wing opposition, and the idea that well, if the right is getting you know if the right is popular, if the right is getting people excited on the streets, then why not just join in with this? Um, an example which is just in the news recently is um, certain leftists who think that um, fascist terror is great. Um, if a uh, QAnon-pilled uh, crunchy fascist, uh, you know, hammers Nancy Pelosi's ha uh, uh, husband over the head, then that and that there is and there should be a, a river of blood between um, socialist organization and fascist organization. And if the two combine, that's not going to be good for working class democracy. Um, I mean, you know, the Red Zip Brown zombie plague articles came about, I mean, p p I mean, partly because I saw so much of the left I wouldn't say so much welcoming the Trump movement or in, for example, in the UK, the Brexit movement, but going along with this idea of, well, if you can't beat them, why join them? You know, at least they're scaring the liberals and we hate liberals. So therefore uh, we should be, we should be getting along this. And there's good money to be made in that. Um, you get, um, yes. Organizations like the Quincy Institute, uh, who, who, who promote this uh, kind of red brown for, uh, isolationist foreign policy, who are funded by the Koch brothers and um, various other propaganda dumpsters, which are, you know, which have very dodgy funding, you know, very, what's the word I'm looking for? not transparent you know they don't talk about their funding but you wouldn't be surprised if it's coming out of the foreign affairs budget of the russian state or the chinese state or stuff like that yeah and you can make a living from doing that and you can um and 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 and, and you get a big mass audience because going along with right-wing populist ideas you know is it's easy it's easy at the moment um, it's, uh, you know, feeding the tiger and, uh, you know, because the tiger is going to eat the liberals, but, you know, right. it's, um, going to turn on the, the so, uh, it's going to turn on these red browns later anyway. I mean, the classic example of this was, um, you know, there was the, the fringe of the, of the Nazi movement in Germany. They had a socialist fringe around, uh, the Strasser brothers and, sure. uh, one of the Strasser brothers was, eventually killed by Hitler and the other had to flee the country, but they really thought that the term socialist and national socialist actually meant something. Um, right. Whereas, of course, once once Hitler got into power, he was, you know, all that, you know, the socialist ideology went out, around, out the window and, um, you know, he made uh, deals to improve capitalist, pro uh, uh, capitalist profits. So, yeah, I mean, the red-brown zombie, zombie plague arguments came about because we live in an era of the rising right-wing populist populism. And what you have is a faction of the left who don't understand why there is a river of blood between right-wing and left-wing uh, versions of popular or, uh, organization. All they can see is this kind of blinkered anti-liberalism, anti-neoliberalism. Yeah. And, uh, they want in on that, and uh, it's a, it's a shortcut. If you don't believe in the possibility of working class democratic self organization anymore, you can believe in the powers of Vladimir Putin or Elon Musk, for that matter. Right. So, um, you know, it's um, it's cynical, it's despairing, it's uh, taking short uh, taking shortcuts and accepting blood money. Uh, and unfortunately, it's a good way to make a living at the moment. 
It is. Yeah. And, you know, there's that you did it a very good job explaining some of the, the ideological and the historical. Mm. And there's, of course, yeah. there's there's a lot. Um, yeah. More cynically, I also do wonder if it really does just come down to cross pollination of audiences, too, to be mm. honest, and just getting more mm. eyes and more views. Yeah. Um, but it's probably somewhere in between. Right. It doesn't hurt to mm. make more money, but maybe there is some mm. legitimate mm. ideology in there, too. Mm -hmm. because there's a lot yeah. and and one of my comments to you before it came on was I, I feel like perhaps I was even <laughs> going overboard um reading through some well for instance the works of national bolshevists and and Alexander Dugan mm. and really mm. getting into it um when I could have looked at your articles which really provide a mm. nice overview um yeah. I found them after unfortunately but yeah you know that I, I would I would oh, say ahead. that yes. if you read uh, if you read my articles that a lot of my analysis is not original. I mean, a lot of my Oops. source uh, for that, those particular articles was, I believe, a particular anarchist, a, a pseudonymous, uh, uh, working under a pseudonym, wrote an article called An Inquiry into Red-Brown Politics. And it's a very long article. It's on yes. the libcom.org website. But, you know, that uh, comrade absolutely went through uh, went through the receipts of you know the the Duganists and the Duganist networks and plus the uh networks in the west who are supporting them um some of which uh include for example the LaRouche network which you know those people have been around since the 70s and they're kind of like you know yes. you know OG uh, OG Red Brown so you know, I'm kind of uh, I'm kind of standing on the uh, on the shoulders of uh, people who like plunged right into the film. <laughs> I've seen this article. I know exactly mm, what you're yeah, talking about. Yeah, yeah. it's uh, it's long, <laughs> very it's awesome. very long, very long. <laughs> yes, but it's got the receipts, as the as the kids say. It really it and, and so that yeah. you know, that's a perfect segue because you know this can get very esoteric for for some folks um, mm. who might not have a background you know, ideologically in this or, or yeah. who might not even care, you know, who might mm -hmm. just be driven by specific issues, right? right. I'm anti-war, you know, I don't need mm -hmm. to know about yeah. Eurasianist networks and stuff to be anti-war. Mm. So yeah. I think, you know, with that being said, how do you introduce folks to like the, the outlines or the basic concepts that are found in, in your series of articles from the mm. red, brown zombies and, and maybe even prior to that? What's yeah general things campism conservative liberal you know where do you start leftism uh yeah. well i mean camp i mean campism is a very good a, 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 a good place to start because campism is a huge problem at the moment yes. um yeah. campism goes all the way back to the well a pro it's, it's got a long pedigree i mean campism is the uh, idea that uh opposition to your own capitalist imperialist state or its alliances means you have to back the opposing capitalist imperial uh, uh, imperialist alliances and the thing is that um <laughs> that's just like a deliberately catching yourself between a rock and a hard place i mean a classic example of this even before World War II, W. E. Du Bois, the, the great um, yes. the, the, the great black writer and organizer, he was making excuses for Japanese imperialism. Like he went to like the, when the when the Japanese were colonizing Manchuria, you know, and they were turning people in, yep, when they were turning people into uh, 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 organizing slave labor for their factories, when they were like uh, doing biological warfare experiments on people, he went there and he thought it was great because it was non-white people doing an imperialism, which uh, was somehow better than white people doing an imperialism. Um, and you can understand, given the, the state of black people in the United States, how he came to that uh, conclusion, but it was very wrong. Um, right. And later on, I mean, I mean, of course, we had that whole uh, thing during the Cold War of, you know, supporting the Soviet, uh, the Soviet Union or, for example, or, for example, Chinese foreign policy. Um, and I mean, you know, socialists uh, could kind of justify that, uh, that if they believed that, you know, so the Soviet Union was, you know, despite its flaws, you know, different and um different in quality to western capitalism and i mean we can debate whether that was true or not i wouldn't uh, agree with it myself but instead these days um modern campism is just the 
idea that the there's good capitalism and bad capitalism pretty much um and you know modern western campists love the uh, 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 love the rhetoric that comes out of moscow or beijing because uh those because, because those leaders talk about you know nationalism about protecting protecting their borders from you know we, from western imperialism and yeah so there's that there's a that so it's based on this whole idea that you know that that western imperialism is somehow qualitatively worse than what they've got going on in in state capitalist um china or kleptocratic russia yeah that's um, yeah <laughs> yeah yeah uh, yeah and it, or just like it, it's like if you're it, it, it's all it's quite often wrapped up quite frankly this kind of white guilt thing that if you're you, you know you have to if if uh, you know if you're in the west you have to uh you know you're morally obliged to only oppose your own state and never say anything uh about op uh, opponent states i mean in this country what what really gets me is we have a a, a prison abolitionist organization who um, do great work exposing, you know, the racist, um, the racist cops and prison systems in this country. I mean, you know, cops and uh, prisons are pretty are racist everywhere. I mean, I suppose in in my country the cops don't usually carry guns, so you know they they gen they have a smaller body count, but that doesn't mean they're any less racist. But these same people go on to make excuses. And approve of Chinese cops and prisons, uh, uh, cops and prisons. Um, so, as I say, as I say, it's it's this kind of intellectual bankruptcy, which, if you don't like your own social system, this intellectual bankruptcy of supporting anything that attacks it. No matter no matter how horrible it is, you can you, you know all you need to know you know all you need to know is uh, is the government does the government in Washington or does my own government uh, like this particular scumbag over here? No, then that particular scumbag might be uh, must be must be a great person, right. and I mean you can see how that bankruptcy just leads to um. Yeah, uh, liberal capitalism doesn't like fascism very much. Therefore, fascism must be a lesser evil. And yeah, but it's 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 that whole despair. I think it's based on despair that it's possible to build um, real democratic working class movement for change. So you'll go for anything that looks like it, uh, it looks like it will knock over the uh, the system you hate so much and um well of course the china the, the german stalinists made exactly that the same mistake in the early 30s about the nazis you know cynically you know uh, 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 cynically um you know uh making the argument that the nazis were no different from the social democrats calling the, the social democrats social fa fascists and reassuring themselves that if the Nazis did take power, then um, it would turn into a communist revolution very soon. And um, it didn't quite work that way. But yeah, it's cynicism. And it's, it's I mean, what George Orwell would have called power worship. It's, you know, these guys look like they're tough and therefore, and, and, and they're scaring my own government, which I feel powerless against, and therefore I'm going to tag along with them. Um, yeah, it's yeah, There's powerless people. Yes, there is. I, 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 I hope I'm not just aimlessly rambling because it is I, hard I to express all this. Yeah, well, and that's why I asked you, and I think the answer is that it might not be easy, might not be possible to easily explain yeah. it without the context. Yeah. While you were talking, though, I, I wrote down. All right, typed out some some things that kind of caught my attention, and yeah. and there are things that that I legitimately wonder, and I don't think that there's an answer because I think the people who are expressing these things would need to answer it themselves. But mm -hmm. I, I have wondered if perhaps some people who 
I in the past really admired. Um, even people involved in politics in the United States, I voted for to be quite frank and on certain tickets, mm -hmm. expressing things today that make me cringe. And when I look at it, I say this is just the inverse of everything that was wrong in the United States in 2001. But it's just inverted on behalf of a foreign government, you know. Mm, mm. I well, don't, I mean, what you, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. What you have in China, uh, when Ch when China is persecuting the Uyghurs and um, you know, in, in in the northwest of their state, they're using war on terror rhetoric. They're using George yes. W. Bush's rhetoric from 2001 about uh, about scary Muslims, yes. and of course that's what uh. And of course, that's what the Russian state and the, and the Syrian state did to uh, discredit uh, the Syrian uprising by uh, trying to, you know, identify it with them, um, identify it with ISIS. And um, so much other what you said. Yes. 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 It's and but but I think to keep it simple, though, I think that this is mm. a good observation in that, you know, I attempted to, for instance, look at what was happening with the the Russian invasion of Ukraine ideologically mm. at first. Mm. reading fourth position theory, unfortunately, and geopolitics. Mm. and But by yeah. seeing that, this is just a reactionary rhetoric. I mean, this is yeah. when you get when you get past a lot of the flourish of language and the history and stuff, this is just reactionary stuff that you would hear oh, in the yes. United States. Definitely. And then kind of having the light bulbs being an American go off in my head and say, oh, yeah, you know, conservatives really love Putin and they still do, actually. Yeah. And and going back and and there's one blog I constantly put out there because I think if anyone can go look at it, it's, it's Pat Buchanan. And and he wrote an article mm -hmm. years and Pat Buchanan was kind of he wasn't yeah. at one point he was kind of on the fringe of the Republican Party. Yeah. And he wrote this article asking Putin, is he one of us? And it's because he talks about all the reactionary social yeah. stances that Putin provides, as well as being pro-capitalist. And mm -hmm. so, you know, looking at, at, at these, I, I, I'm, I'm questioning, you know, that. And then also looking at Syria and, again, talking about people for, for whom, you know, growing up, there is much respect. Many people, I think, in the West, when we got to that Syrian conflict, had this pretzel logic because they, you know, they're... Their template, which is fine, is to critique the West. And that's good. Mm -hmm. That should happen. However, yeah. in doing so, and, you know, I think keeping it basic, they default legitimized Assad mm. or mm. dismissed the things that were happening in Syria that were really impacting Syrian people. Mm. And they're, I mean, you know, they're, they're, especially when we talk about some of the uh, gas attacks and white helmet conspiracies, yeah. things. Yeah, even, yeah. Even people like Noam Chomsky, you know, saying some questionable things about who are these rebels, <laughs> very much lining with Bush era things from the Iraq war. To be fair, Chomsky yeah. was trying to uh, minimize the Khmer Rouge's uh, genocide in Cambodia yeah. back in the late 70s. It might be um, my night. Uh, my, my naive well, take on, on him. The, but, you know. the thing was, there are people like him, and uh, are you fully, uh, famil familiar with John Pilger, the Australian uh, yes. journalist? Yes. yes. Well, John Pil uh, the, the, the thing is, John Pilger um, is, has come up with, has ended up in exactly the same horrible position. But John Pilger did great work in the 70s because he exposed what the Khmer Rouge were doing, and also he exposed uh, the Indonesian government's uh, genocidal policies in East Timor. But he said at the time that he did this because the West backed Indonesia. And uh, the, the West, like the Reagan and Thatcher, were cynically, cynically backing Pol Pot against uh, the Vietnamese government who were backed by the Soviet Union. So... They were right because they started from a position of the West are bad about every, uh, uh, about everything, um, and I mean there is there's a there's a flip side of those. There's the flip side of the people who who say the West are right about every uh, about everything. I mean you know I see that uh, you know I do I do see a lot of the people of who are correctly supporting Ukraine go on to um basically say that Israel are right to do genocide in Palestine because, yes. you know, they're just yes. the flip no side. They're, they're just yeah. the, <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, it's it's campism. It's just, yes. it's, it's, it's the first camp or the second camp.
And I mean, the classic, the classic example back in the 70s, I mean, when the, the 70s, when you had the socialist tendency that rejected campus and back then was neither Washington nor Moscow, but international socialism. And I still think that that's an excellent, uh, excellent that, motto. That but, was one of the things when, when I typed and then yeah. you started, you, you introduced other interesting things that I, I wanted to yeah. gravitate to. But, you know, I, I think that, I, you know, modern politics, the, the, without you know, going too complicated, I do yeah. reduce some of it to potentially just grifting, to be honest. But if we're talking about social media, at least, but, yeah. you know, I wonder historically if we're talking about people who have done and, and written and produced, you know, very good articles or, or literature in the past who are now having problems yeah. grappling with the modern world. Yeah. Hearing what you said, thinking you know, coming out of the Cold War era, you really did have two camps, right? And and it is, you know, projecting that template, I suppose, could be argued mm. as being, having been valid at, at yeah. one point, but yeah. it's still, you know, problematic. But it, th this idea of coming out of that, we, we have this, right? And then mm. in the 90s, we, we did have this kind of movement of movements, at least in the United mm. States and other parts of the world, mm. that was anti-globalization, you know, the World Trade yeah. Organization. And, and that's yeah. my era. Yeah, I was in mm -hmm. Seattle. And, and and so, you know, there, there's there's crossover with that, too, of we yeah. are against globalization. And so, you know, I when, when we get to concepts like multipolarity, which is something people might have heard of, or just yeah. this idea of being against the West, it kind of doesn't matter, like this Marxist idea. Yes. It, it can be an, an yeah. underdeveloped, you know, form of yeah. socialism but the primary well, goal is to break this neoliberalism I, one, I say, one, one thing okay yeah, sorry no no you well that. i mean when you're talking about uh the anti-globalization movement the big problem is that i think you get red ground politics is anti-globalization but pro what um my article my article that was a predecessor to the red brown articles the article on conservative left uh, conservative leftism and i mean to, to break it down conservative leftism i think is the larval form of red brown politics it's basically uh if neoliberals say it i'm against it and i was inspired to write that article because there was um a, po a pro big protest against the tppa the trans pacific partnership agreement that like a, a neoliberal free trade agreement my country china the united states that kind of thing um i think actually trump put the kibosh on that so uh america didn't end up being a part but the point yes. was there were nazis on those protests there were actual nazis and even short of nazis there were people flying the new zealand flag i.e the flag of the colonial regime in this country right. that you know opp oppresses the indigenous uh, indigenous people and it's like you're against globalization but i does that mean you're for nationalism right or that's uh, i mean th 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 that's the question that's how if you're only against globalization if you're only against neoliberalism but you're not putting forward a democratic alternative then you really are opening the door to um towards a reactionary alternative a fascist alternative and even so more so in this era when sections of the ruling class have given up yep. on neoliberalism you have the, i'm going to name names the peter fields of this world the elon musk of this world they've they want they, they want um technocratic authoritarianism um, and they're going to attack neoliberalism from that point of view. And they've got all the money. And if you can put a left wing gloss on their article, uh, on their arguments, then you're going to you're, you're gonna have a good you're going to have a good time. Um, right. And in that regard, I mean, talking about talking about grifting, I haven't found I mean, I've been looking for it. I've been looking for this article. I'm pretty sure that Steve Bannon did an interview with with the guardian which is a center-left uh, newspaper in britain and he said to them and he said to, uh, uh, specifically something like i'm my goal is to peel off 10 percent of your audience 10 percent uh, uh, i track 10 percent of the left-wing audience to a right-wing reactionary program and you can do that on the basis of it's not neoliberal so uh yes yeah, so, I... so, so, yeah, I so and and my question in all of this and and I'm, I'm I'm being authentic. It really is. 
yeah. it's, it's began to dr to drive you know whatever it is I'm doing with this platform. But my question in all of this is, you know, we we talked about political regimes, we talked about ideologies, we talked about these kind of you know artificial historical you know timelines that that we create. But the what I don't hear in any of this is solidarity with people. No, no, right? I mean people Which, disappear. And, and again, I thought. I mean, from the very early times of reading socialist, leftist, left wing literature, that solidarity with people, specifically internationally, was the goal. And... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, let's let's put let's put it this way. I mean, if your goal is to uh, lead a lead a comfortable life, um, right. people, uh, uh, you know, working people under fire in Ukraine or Hong Kong or Syria. Uh, they're not going to be able to fund you, but right. the states will, or reactionary billionaires will. I mean, there's money to be made. So I think you're right that it, it's a grift to some degree. But on the other hand, we have to understand that there's a supply and demand. Right. The, the, there is an audience for these ideas that there wasn't, and the audience has been caused by this ongoing slow you know ongoing slow motion car wreck that is you know the global economy and plus let's face it covid and the covid restrictions pushed a lot of uh, pushed a lot of people over the head led i mean i'm reminded of the american reactionary uh, william buckley who said something like uh, our job is to stand athwart history yelling stop and honestly, I think a lot of people just want kind of history to stop at the moment and they're prepared to listen to, you know, the reactionaries who tell them that they can make it stop, that they can bring back this uh, bring back this world that they think they remember from the 70s or even the 50s. Uh, when Did uh, this much romanticized? Yeah, mm. and, and I do I, I do wonder too, I, I, I do strongly feel that many people um who who aren't making money who who are the audience mm. for mm. these people um and, and 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 also before i even say that I, I think that you know just because somebody is is grifting it doesn't mean that that they don't hold culpability or that that's part of a cycle either i mean fascism mm. is you know spreading worldwide and i do think that um even somebody promoting this if their goal is purely non-ideological is still uh radicalizing people or yeah. or changing minds of people who will go out into the real world and do things right yes yeah yes that's an argument yes. too yes. that i feel is just um uh, left to decide sometimes but um i guess maybe refocusing let me, let me go back on this because the mm -hmm. when, when i read that article going back to, to the article i'm going to leave the other mm -hmm. point to the side it, it, it seemed like it started when, when you were writing, uh, it, it seemed like it started with Syria and there's a great meme in, in the first article mm. with, with Assad. Yeah. Is, is that, yeah. let me ask you, because you also introduce, we, we have a concept of conservative leftists, we have a concept yeah. of campists, we, but, but this kind of introduces the concept of anti-imperialists or alt-imperialists, mm. you know, however mm. you want to describe that. Yeah. It, it, is it in that time where we start seeing that phenomena of of maybe the red brown alliance of what you would call maybe yeah. alt imperialist? I'm thinking like yeah. gray zone and people like that. Oh God, yes. Um, well, you know what happened with um the, with the gray zone, the founders of gray zone, Max Blumenthal, Ben Norton, they were anti Assad. They supported the Assad, the the, uh, the Arab Spring. They supported the uprising. Then they went to a certain conference, a certain conference in Moscow, a certain conference in Moscow. Other people at that uh, conference were Mike Flynn, who's now this huge figure in like Christian fascist politics in the United States, and uh, Jill Stein, the 2016 Green Party nomination for president. And they came home from that, uh, a, 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 and they came ho home from that conference, and suddenly they'd flipped, and uh, the. The, the Syrian uprising were all ISIS head choppers and Assad was a pretty cool guy. So, um, and yeah. yeah, you get a, you can, you can make a better, you, you, you can make a better living that, uh, that way. But um, 
I suppose what happened was, um, it is the politics of despair to, uh, to some degree, because I mean, I suppose the high point was at the beginning of the 2010s, the Occupy movement globally, right. and of course the Arab Spring. And when um, the forces of reaction prevailed upon both of those, smart people, smart writers who uh, know how to get ahead kind of saw which way the wind was blowing. But I mean, I know that my ideas were woken up by Syria. I My ideas were woken up by watching the anti-imperialists suddenly start saying, um, start spreading, as you say, those kinds of con uh, con uh, conspiracy theories. And conspiracy theories that aren't any different from fascist conspiracy theories. I mean, it's just like, I mean, yep. I, I, as I keep saying in the, yeah, I mean, as I, as I keep saying in the Red Brown um, article, I believe that I was just, I, I was just shocked to um, see that people were making arguments, uh, and people who called themselves socialists were making arguments that were indistinguishable in form from uh, uh, from the, the the kind of denialist arguments you um, you get out of you, you you get you get out of the Trump movement, right. um, and it's because it's because those uh, those arguments work. I mean, the colourful metaphor I have, I mean, Steve Bannon again, he he described it uh, flooding the zone with bullshit. Um, right. Right. or there's um Peter Pomerantsev, uh, the he's a guy who's written a lot about Vladimir Putin's regime. He's put it the same way that Russian state propaganda works on the principle that nothing is true and everything is possible. So, uh, it's that called, familiar. It's a, yeah, yeah, it's called the just asking questions. It's just you yes. don't have jacking to off, yeah. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> you don't have to create a plausible counter narrative you just have to say but there's holes in this there's holes in that and the idea is to make people just give up and i mean from what they say about that's what's happened in the public square and in, in, in russia people have just given up thinking about politics because they're just because the, the zone is just so absolutely flooded with bullshit and i mean right. and that's how you have the form of a democracy in which it becomes ab impossible to um, Im Im impossible to actually uh, hold the uh, hold the powers that be um, to uh, to account. I mean, people, this is happening because people are pr uh, are prepared to pay to make it happen, but also because of um, of I think a despair in what has happened with the actual people's movements over the last 10 years. Maybe, maybe it will flip back again if, if I don't know, if the, if the, if the movements in Iran, for example, succeed in um, overthrowing the regime there, maybe things will switch back again. But um, right now, right now there's all, all we have is this kind of hope, I suppose. I think you're, I mean, I, you know, the idea of despair is I it's it's funny when I being younger I felt that that was something that was very true and uh with, with that you know environmentalism anti-war movements it, it, many movements from the 60s and the 70s in the United States you know myself being maybe a very young child in the 80s but the 90s seemed mm -hmm. as if those were you know losing and that there wasn't something necessarily taking that that place but um, it, th this idea of, con of of despair, I, th I think, is very mm. interesting because you, as you say, you grab onto what works, you know, mm. after yeah. having seen things not work for so long, or at least not see substantial change and incrementalism yeah. for so long. And it goes to a, a discussion that that I, I, I've had in the past of this idea of globalization, kind of reframing you know, geopolitical, not only politics, but ideology in, in let's yep. say the 90s, right? And and how 
you know, within globalization, there are legitimate leftist or anti-globalization, we could say there are legitimate leftist mm. you know, concerns, the spread of, of course, international capitalism, workers' rights, neo-colonial, all these things that personally I grew up, you know, uh, analyzing mm. and, and believing. And then, but also you have this uh, idea of, you know, globalists, which is to the side, which is this reactionary conspiracy about internationalism, which you can see very easily becoming anti-Semitic with old tropes yeah. going back to the you know, elders yep. of Zion, for instance, yep. ideas that the EU is going to bring gay people here, right? <laughs> the idea, uh, uh, but th this very reactionary right-wing thing that you, for a US audience would be like Alex Jones or something, right? You know, that that, that was in, in many ways validified by the MAGA movement. But it seems as if these two things, perhaps because of the success of neoliberalism and despair of people's movements in the mm -hmm. West, have, have kind of merged into this amorphous thing to where mm -hmm. I perhaps you could just call it populism today. I, I don't know. But to where if you're against any kind of, you know, internationalism that is this the West, we're in this together, maybe going back to campism, but that when yeah. you get involved in the specifics, maybe with COVID and anti-lockdown and, you know, how the right latched on to that or Ukraine and lots of propaganda from Russia harkening back to the Soviet Union that people might romanticize or, or feel mm -hmm. affiliated to. Yep. That these two ideas that are very different have kind of globbed together. I don't know, mm -hmm. you know, have have you encountered this idea or 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 you know well, say in the 90s I was with you. Today you're saying things that in the 90s would have been someone like Pat Buchanan, right? How did well, you get there? You know? I mean in my I mean in my case, you know, I mean, I I came into um, revolutionary politics in the whole in that late ninety era, the era of um, Seattle. Yes, and I would have always described myself as an alter globalization. Like, I mean, I'm an I'm an internationalist. I've always been. It's it's very easy to be an internationalist when you come from a small, a small and isolated con con country such as ours. That um. I mean, it, it, I mean, one of the things growing up is there was a great, uh, there was almost a class divide between the people from our country who had like grandparents who were born in uh, Britain or Ireland and therefore could get EU passports and therefore go and live and work in the in the EU, whereas uh, the rest of us were stuck here at the arse end of nowhere. Um, so, I mean, I've always been an alter globalization. I mean, the, you know, I, always wanted a socialist uh, socialist internationalism right but, right, but you know you know i don't uh, you know i don't approve of borders on principle because they divide because uh, because they divide working people um but i mean that was that was the point if you're i mean at the time i think there were some theorists of the movement who thought that this kind of vagueness about what the alternative was was a bonus. I mean, one no, many yeses. But what happens if some of those yeses are actually fascist arguments? Um, build up the borders, or um, right. it's uh, yeah. I mean, it's um, I mean, I was reading an article recently about, I mean, localism. I that that very kind of like green associated thing that you know you know we should um you know trade within our but you know trade within within our areas you know net, you know local produce and i mean sure. but that has been invaded by fascists in themselves who are like you know keep out out uh, keep out outsiders and things like that and i think the real uh, the real issue the difference between the socialist uh opposition to neoliberal globalization and the fascist ranting about globalist is it's a is it's the difference between a systemic analysis and conspiracy theory. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, right wing pol populism, fascism, based on conspiracy is based on uh, conspiracy theory. In that it doesn't. Uh, instead of saying there are there's a system which is set up which automatically you know despite the best intentions of people within it means that capital and power accumulate in various areas and you know the marxist analysis is the capitalist basically acts as an organ of of capital you know whereas the right the the, the right wing argument the 
is that the system is bad because wicked people are making it bad. That there's, yeah. you know, there are, there are puppet masters. Yeah. And I mean, whether there be international Jew or hostile UFOs or... Um, Oh, my current favorite is the idea that George Soros is encouraging transgender people to turn us all into cyborgs. I can mean, I tell you? Can I can I tell you? And you can continue. But at, yeah. at, at one point, I was accused of receiving seriously money from George Soros, <laughs> and it wasn't just an accusation. It was someone actually spent his Caleb Malp, and he actually spent time on YouTube. Oh God! About I could say I only wish. You know, <laughs> he's the he's the. Oh. He's the he he's the worst of the worst. <laughs> oh my goodness! But when you yeah. say what you're saying, though, makes a lot of sense psychologically yeah. because you started this out by talking about despair, mm. and it does feel like if we're talking about a socialist, a leftist critique of globalization, that honestly today there's not a whole lot right going on with that globally speaking we're with mm. with great strength yeah. i even feel as if maybe people who aren't as familiar with the topic just confuse the idea of globalization with mm. capitalist globalization mm. and world trade organization and all these things mm. as opposed to international socialism perhaps of the past and but that's there's a also a yeah, yeah, there's yeah. also a problem that there's um there's an older tradition there's an older tradition of like welfare state nationalism. Sure. I mean that was like uh, the British Labour Party or the Australian Labour pa uh, Party in the 30s. They combined, um, you know, building up a well. Uh, they built up a strong welfare state that was you know restricted to white people, restricted to you know white men, and uh, women were expected to you know live off their husbands' wa wages, kind of thing. And I mean one of the problems is this belief that there was some people seem uh, seem to think that neoliberalism is a particularly evil form of capitalism but that historical the, the historical memory doesn't go back to people were uprising in the west in the united states and other western countries in the 60s and the 60s were the high point of capitalism so far as in full employment as in yeah but it it was it, it, you know but it was based on the exclusion and oppression of so many people, uh, you know, you know, w women were restricted to the home, gay people were pretty much hunted for sport kind of thing. Um, and, you know, that's why you have the hippies and later on the punks rebelling against that, uh, uh, rebelling against that whole thing. So there's this, I mean, one of the, and I mean, one of the, one of the problems, is, uh, one of the origins of the conservative left thing, which, as I say, isn't like red brown politics but it's kind of like the you know it's it's, it's like the gateway drug to yeah. left brown politics yeah. is that kind of nostalgia that idea that you know sure Lin, you know you see like liberals these days saying gee i wish we had somebody like a uh, lyndon b johnson in power at the moment and it's like <laughs> you know what that guy was doing in vietnam right yeah, um, yeah. So or... it's nostal nostalgia is debilitating and it's catching unfortunately there's that nostalgia and and i i do feel like too you know there 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 is a a valid critique of maybe performative politics by you know establishment parties on the left that's fine but it, it does feel too you know again talking about despair and and how when in when you're steeped in despair and things are not structurally changing conspiracy can be a very easy way and conspiracy mm. can involve those bad people of course right mm. and those bad mm. people can be you know whatever you'd like but modern maybe a more modern take so many people that i see who present as left talking about or or mocking wokeism this this thing or or mocking transgender <sighs> discussions as because that's not real class discussion right what do they think about, work trans people do for a living this is well and these people obviously have never used a pallet jack before because who do you think is working next to you but you know it, it's this simp it, it's i i do see this as well of of identifying enemies right and 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 by identifying mm. enemies that are easy targets mm. maybe lgbtq or you know yeah and with and that then you can attack the major liberal party right while also saying but i'm not right you get your big audience on both sides and it seems as, yep. as if you're speaking truth to power in reality it seems as if you're kind of like a vampire feeding on this despair of yep. authentic real true solidarity with global people yep. and having an honest discussion in which yep. you could critique 
as we were talking about someone like Putin as well as Joe Biden, right? Yeah, I mean, what what you have, I mean, I mean, Putin's got some clever people working for him, and because if you if you listen to or read his uh, his speeches, he's 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 putting out this red meat for both uh the left uh yeah, yeah, uh, opponents of uh, the western governments and the right wing ones like he'll he'll say the stuff that sounds almost like a socialist anti imperialist um uh, stuff about you know you know Amer- you know the americans in the west think they own the world they are um, you know you use us for their privileges and then it'll flip instantly and it's like and they're all got to try to make us gay and have 46 genders and <laughs> it, yes. it, it, it appeal to appeals to both camps at once it's, it's very efficient that way and and this is just venting personally but from from the people who well first of all from politicians but also from from the people that make money proliferating that type you know it's mm. almost as if i understand i don't condone it but i understand where they're coming from um with with the the frustrating thing though is talking to the audience again, and that's what I always I go back to is that these first pers- people are going to make money and 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 they're going to do what they're going to do. What's frustrating is when you're talking to people who authentically do have a, a genuine want to help, you know, or or genuinely are, you know, do not want to have war, or, you know, things of, yeah. of of this nature, who truly believe that they're fighting the good fight, um, who don't know what you just said. Or don't know Paul Manafort worked on the Party of Regents campaign for Yanukovych, mm, who was, you know, mm. essentially you know, shutting down democratic avenues in that country. Yeah. You know, the, not being have not being exposed to because of campism, the other side of things, and then being ignorant of that, not being not willing to engage in it either. You know, thinking that mm. this is you're just a you're just a liberal, you're just this or that. I understand where they're coming from because that's not the dynamic in which these discussions are being had on the big scale. Mm. Those types of things are just not even discussed. And mm. I don't know. I mean, I don't know if it's ideological or if it's for money or if it's because the money source, you know, is as what, you know, maybe we had alluded to before, doesn't want you to say that. It could be as simple as just presenting things that are on RT to a Western audience seems alternative news because it's from a different government. Mm. And it's not what mm. you see on ABC and and I, I I don't really have those answers, but well, I remember. I mean, I was you know, I I mean, my politics have developed over the years. And when RT first started coming out in the West in like the late to the late forties, I think you'd say I thought it was great. I thought it was great because well, it's professionally yes, produced. Yeah. It's pre- it's professionally produced and it gives an alternative uh, p- p- point of view. I mean, that was the uh, I, uh, that was the era in which you didn't actually realize that the alternative point of view could be a fascist one. I mean, that was yeah. I mean, I mean that's if you're yeah. I mean, this is it's it's much easier. It's campism. This kind of you know the, this kind of Red brown populism is much easier because you, you just take whatever the mainstream is putting a plus sign in front of and you put a minus sign in front of. It's much easier. It doesn't it doesn't take yeah. up as much brain cycles. Um it's it, it, it it's harder to try to um yeah, it's it's easy to go along with uh what, what seems popular and what seem you know what what's being you know what what the zone is being flooded with and it's just in in times of crisis in times of crisis and times of despair people's brains shut down yeah. people's brains shut down and, they look and for i mean easy I, answers. Yeah. I and I, I keep going back to the fact that the highest point the highest point of like of socialism in the west the highest point where we actually had a chance to build democratic working class alternative was when was when capitalism was at its at its height of productivity in the in the sixties before the uh, before the oil shock. I mean, people who think that you know disasters and crises don't usually uh, redound to the benefit of the good guys. Right, right. And I don't wonder. And and this is complete conjecture. But you know, I so talking about some of those figures that you know maybe yeah. someone like Chomsky, for instance. You know, as a teenager, mm. I had to, you know, I would when the Internet 
began or or looking in zines, but, you know, I would write to something like AK Press and get like a CD of his lecture yeah. and listen. Right. Yeah. And that, you know, things were uh, very scene orientated and, and a lot of times you had to physically go places. But I don't wonder if if social media as it exists today with and I think everybody listening probably understands where we're going. But this idea of, of just like SEO key words and, you know, uh, mm. working the algorithm, uh, understanding that you know, being able to to work off the backs of uh, other people um being on each other's shows all these people that we talk about today all the gray zone people jimmy Dore, whomever you know glenn greenwald types they they're all mm. you know they all interact with each other they all support each other mm. um, they all prom they all promote each other i don't wonder how much the advent of the internet kind of lifts this this, this group of people who are also making a lot of money doing this too um because you know my question would be i i understand where we're at you know and and we, we can analyze why they're doing it or, or or guess we can analyze what they're doing but again it doesn't answer where's the alternative you know well it's like the th i well we i don't think i mean i think i'm from a pretty similar generational uh point of view right. because you know i remember what it was like before the internet or at least when the internet had no pictures on it yeah right. um so and, and again I don't I think we should be careful about nostalgia for the old days because Ooh, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean what we have, the internet, I mean people blame the internet for atomization. I don't think I I don't think that's the case. The internet connects as yes. much as it atomizes. And I mean the th it's I mean it, to some degree the internet is a kind a kind of like a city because cities are kind of when you live in a city it's you know kind of a bit isolating you're you're divorced from traditional communities but you can build non-traditional communities yeah. you know and We're this, this is why this gay discussion. people yeah yeah this is why yeah, yeah. i mean as i yeah. say you know from from somebody uh, from somebody who lives at the bottom of the world the uh, <laughs> internet is an absolute lifestyle and we can yeah. hear look we can hear in real time from people yeah. in ukraine from socialists in ukraine yes. who are having freaking uh russian cruise missiles fly back by, by, by the window and i mean very true yeah and and we've got Google tra uh, Translate now, in which, you know, they don't even have to know English and we can uh, figure out what we're saying. So the social atomization is the real problem. I don't think that's caused by the Internet, but there are greater forces behind the Internet. I mean, yes. and this is getting into, in, into the weeds a little bit, but it's a tool. Anonymous. Do you remember the anonymous phenomenon? Of course. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, you know, that came out of 4chan, and 4chan is a fascist uh, is a fascist shit pit now. Of course. But it wasn't always a fascist shit pit, and because what ha there was always a fascist shit pit element to it, but what happened is when, you know, Anonymous started, like, um, you know, cracking into the Pentagon or cracking into big, uh, big uh, you know, big corporations, what happens is the people who had more of a left-wing and liberatory uh viewpoint behind that they got busted they got big they got they got they got jail terms and stuff the fascists we even those people they were left alone <laughs> so and, and so that, <laughs> that's how it happened so i mean yeah yeah, yeah we have atomization atomization and despair is the problem and i mean I, I hate to say it because I've been a COVID hawk. I think it, like my country had quite had quite strict COVID lock, lockdown, New Zealand and sure. yeah. it did, and we kept and, and we kept deaths very very low for a while. And you know what? We happened. We had a freaking uprising. It was it's something like what happened with the Canadian truckers. We had a bunch of weirdos basically you know a right populist uprising occupied the lawn outside parliament and refused to leave for three weeks and they eventually had to be chased off by riot police um and that that is why our government had to pull back on that because you know they were the the, the fascists were really building out of right. that so right. i mean what is what is the real disaster is that those those measures that had to be done to keep people safe also led to them being atomized and led to people who didn't i mean i think 
I've built up a tolerance to uh, bullshit on the internet because I've been uh, very online for decades. But yeah. what happened was a lot of people who weren't very online were forced to become very online during the COVID right. lockdown and the fash right. got their hooks into them. Yeah. So we're living through an era of atomization and in atomization, fascist answers seem obvious that, um, that, uh, that, uh, the idea of actually working with other people and protagonistically, I suppose, building a better future seems unrealistic. And it's much better to go on and cheerlead for Vladimir Putin or Bashar al-Assad or Donald Trump or whoever the prime minister of England is these days. I've lost track. <laughs> but the, the, yeah. that, that kind of thing, it makes uh, the despair and atomization. And... You don't want to, you have the alternative to believing that there must be a way out of this, that there'll be a, that there'll be, there'll be a new, a new way in which people can organize. I mean, either you believe that that is going to happen and the atomization is going to reverse and people are going to find new ways to organize, even with the shitty internet we have now, even with uh, my owning Twitter, that kind of thing. Either you believe that that's going to happen or you give up and are, or, or, or you give up and I mean, I don't I, I, I don't know. I, th 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 those are and those perhaps are, that start with giving up because that's let me let me rephrase what I said before. Not the internet, you know, not not going back in time when things were, were quote unquote better because they weren't mm -hmm. necessarily, yeah. but not the internet, but perhaps social media platforms being used as a tool mm -hmm. by those who have money mm -hmm. to consolidate via algorithms yeah. and things like that, a certain message, right? Yeah. And which is how it feels to me talking about giving up. If I go on, I see... I see things where I immediately say, this is, this is Jimmy Dore. This is Greenwall. This is Grayson. Why is this mm. everywhere? You know, this is even Jill Stein, you know, and, and people like everybody, everybody, Tulsi Gabber, everybody's doing the thing now, you know? Yeah. And they're doing the thing because you make money. And because when you reduce the messaging, the very basic things that elevates that message through all the other noise, specifically in social media yes. platforms, you know? Yes. So social media can also be used for very good things too. It's not to, to say that, yeah. but talking about, you know, despair, I do maybe empathize with that a little bit. I've said many times, it feels like attempting to have an authentic, nuanced, legitimate conversation is, you know, throwing a pedal in this ocean or a pebble in this ocean in which it's devoid of that. And a lot of people yeah. I feel like are, you know, not necessarily, I want to say grow up, but th this is where they get their knowledge from too. Mm. And, you know, it develops ideologies and ideas beyond yeah. just profiteering. And, yeah. and that's the discussion I find, you know, interesting, maybe moving forward, you know, is yeah. as opposed to things that we talked about in, in the past, again, not better or worse, but just the, how it's fundamentally changed, you know, with social media and how it works mm. algorithmically. Mm. Mm. This consolidation of this idea that, you know, yeah, being anti-West is okay. Like it, it doesn't matter. Support, you know, the other side. All, all the things that we talked about, mm -hmm. whether it's campism and you know, everybody who's listening to this needs to go out and, and I'll link the uh, articles to Red Brown Zombie and, and read the, all that mm -hmm. analysis, you know, kind of hitting a, a a wall of people who have been informed by all the usual suspects that we said, you know, and 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 questioning where are they, you know, is are are yeah. they elevated because of outside funding? Are they elevated because of unified messaging? I you know, I don't know. Mm. I don't have an answer or anything. It's yeah. just an observation. Well, organization has to still be possible. I mean, yeah. uh, let, let's let's put it this way. I mean, I think we need a new international in a, a that like a, a new socialist international, like a new like formal cooperation uh, between people in all the countries 
of the, uh, the all the con uh, countries of the world who are going to uh, oppose neoliberal capitalism and the rising tide of fascism. And you see the basics of uh, you 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 see the basics of this. I mean. I try to do my best to elevate, for example, the voices of Ukrainian socialists. You know, they are yeah. absolutely exactly. dynamite at ex pointing out how bankrupt most of the Western left has become of this. And yet they don't give their own government uh, any slack either. You know, they right. they, they point out, um, you know, the Zelensky government's attack on, uh, you know, on workers' rights at the at the behest of Western funders. Let's uh, let, let, let's put it that way. So there's, that's the, it is, and the, also, the reason we need international is because we've got to be able to find one another. I mean, yeah, I know that in my country, I mean, m most of the, you know, I am, you know, fight. Uh, I and my comrades in fight back are very, uh, very isolated on the local left. Nobody, uh, nobody wants to listen to this stuff. Um, yeah, no, <sighs> but and, and I mean, part of it is being being mean is fun. <laughs> there being basics like that too. nasty is fun yeah. and there is a yeah. point and i mean yeah. there's a point to conspiracy theories that i have to point out that there's a conspiracy theory that the part of building these conspiracy theories conclusion uh, conclusions is to deliberately crush people's empathy like you crush people's empathy by telling them that the victims of an atrocity aren't real or they somehow deserved it. And I mean, that's, you know, they harden their heart. You see them, um, you know, you, you, you saw them doing that about COVID victims. You saw them doing that about people who, who are under fire in Syria and Ukraine. Um, you know, that, 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 yes. that whole, uh, the, that, that whole persuading yourself, trying to talk yourself out of empathy because, because there's a, a bit, because at some point in the past, our empathy was misplaced. Like in 2000, in 2000, because people used, for example, our empathy with the victims of 9 11 to build support for imperialist wars in Afghanistan and Iraq. Good example. And so people, there's, there's a great, there's, there's great psychic power in making yourself hard and making, uh, in trying to rid yourself of empathy by, um, uh, by, by acting in this, the secret knowledge that uh, those people deserved it. And, um, they get they get hard uh, they 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 fortify their personalities in that way i think wilhelm reich would have called it character armor or something like that yeah. and that is a that is a great thing that is a great thing to do to enable yourself to survive the current era um all i could say is our task is incredibly hard but if people in Ukraine are doing it under actual conditions of attempted genocide, I don't think people in the West just dooming over social media <laughs> have an excuse not to try. Well put. <laughs> well put. And, and and maybe on a more optimistic note too, I don't wonder if there might have been, and, and this is a different discussion not to go in, but it just over the past 10 years or I, I, I wonder if things just happen to line up in such a way that what you wrote about this red, brown zombie, you know, alliance, lack mm -hmm. of nuance, campism just was able to get their hooks in as, as you said, and that doesn't necessarily mean that things might not change in the future. And, you know, I'm mm -hmm. thinking about how it's almost like you talked about hippies and punks and I'm guilty of, of dressing up like a punk when I was young too. And, you know, I, I don't wonder if looking at what's happening, at least on social media and the advent of hashtags, things like MAGA communism or patriotic, <laughs> patriotic socialism, um, that your reaction is the reaction. I think a lot that it's, 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 it's gone into the spectacle stage perhaps. 
and that perhaps there will be a backlash right to it in in the future i don't know but it does solicit laughter i think when you look yeah. at it so to where perhaps you know 4 years ago 5 years ago speaking specifically with the united states or there might have been very disgruntled people who had never voted before who were involved with bernie sanders and maybe the green party that latched on out of frustration with the system to this anti neoliberal rhetoric you know and absolving sources like rt like we talked about saying well who cares mm -hmm. our media is like that too and you know rationalizing mm -hmm. perhaps advocating for some very bad stuff you know maybe perhaps in the future it will shift but that that kind of goes to my next question for you and then we can kind of wrap it up because we've been on for, i could keep talking this is mm -hmm. this is very much what what i'm interested in you have a wealth of knowledge but talking more about and, and I almost feel bad doing this because it feels as if the discussion should be about internationalism as opposed to the red brown zombie stuff. You know, perhaps that'll be another episode. But talking about maybe that spectacle of, of where mm. we're at, do you, do you first of all see and and if you do, what is it? Maybe the current or, or future flashpoints for red brown efforts or conservative leftism. For example, it it, it seems like at the moment. Um, latching onto the anti-war movement to justify, mm -hmm. you know, Russian imperialism, I suppose, is is an mm. interesting, you know, way that it's moving, you know, perhaps further away from some of that stuff I discussed with the United States. Are, are there things that you see in the future or even maybe alt imperialism too, that or, or contemporary things, um, not 2018, yeah. but 2022? Um. Well, yeah. I mean, the first pro the, the problem of anti-war movement is that the same problem as the anti-globalization movement. Really, it's like if you're against it, what are you for? I mean, like in the six in the sixties, nobody would have suggested that uh, the Viet Cong. Well, nobody on the left would have suggested that the Viet Cong had to lay down its arms because the Americans had nuclear weapons and they were just to sport, destroy the place. And yet that's exactly what they're uh, suggesting that Ukraine should do in the face of uh, Russian saber, saber rattling to get today. I mean, that's the, the, the problem of, the, the problem is trying to flesh out an alternative, which is not the fascist alternative, which is, you know, the modern equivalent of neither Washington nor Moscow, but international socialism. Um, and that flashpoints, flashpoints in the United States right now, and, and the Western world right now, I would say trans people. Trans people, because you yeah. see it actually more in Britain than you do in the United, uh, in the United States, because there is a huge left wing uh, uh, or, you know, they think the left wing argument uh, uh, constituency for transphobia, basically because uh, Britain never really had uh, the third wave uh, feminist movement that the United States had. And so they still have like a lot of very 70s style uh, feminist ideas about, you know, women's, you know, almost biological es essentialism that, you know, you know, women's biology is naturally not naturally nicer and uh, cuddlier and uh, less nasty than uh, male biology. And if that's true, explain Margaret Thatcher to me. Um, but, uh, <laughs> yes. but 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 it is it, it that has been a real area of red brown convergence. And I mean, you're beginning to see that some of these um, left-wing transphobes have realized they're standing on the same uh, demonstrations as Proud Boys, right. as, as other fascists are like, wait, what? Um, right. And this is exactly what Margaret Atwood predicted in The Handmaid's Tale, that this kind of a very essentialist feminism could easily find yes. itself, um, you know, um, uh, you know in, in League of the with the with the with the worst kind of reaction um so that's um that's that, i mean i i think that's a real flash uh, flash point at the moment um so i mean it, yeah and i mean 
I mean, to a, to a large extent, I think my 2018 article, apart from that, stands up because, you know, Ukraine, the Ukraine issue has taken over from the Syria issue, but is yeah. still exactly the same, you know, exactly like the same kind of argument, you know, going from all Syrians are uh, Islamist head choppers to uh, all Ukrainians are Azov battalion Nazis yep. kind of thing, exactly. kind of thing. But I mean, these are, I mean, you've got to... I really hope it doesn't get to the point where you actually have to, you'll end up with the, with a fascist coalition in power before these people realise how badly they fucked up. But that's how it happened in Germany and Spain in the 30s. Um, all I can say is we have to organise internationally because... Let's face it, uh, the principled internationalists the, uh, the, are in a minority at the moment, so we do need to organise internationally and keep, go uh, 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 and, and keep going. And um, it's, it's, I don't know. I mean, I suppose I don't want to think about it too too dearly, uh, deeply because I don't want to start dooming but uh well no you know it, it's my yeah. it's my responsibility <laughs> you know if, it, yeah. if this is going public it is my responsibility to say that um to, to say we have to start or, or start start organizing an internationalist left which rejects campism which rejects all this kind of inter intellectual collapse in the face of reactionary politics i think that's perfectly said and for, and maybe to get there we need to recognize it first i don't know that a lot of people are there mm, yet yeah and, or you it's know, like yeah or it's like i think to some degree a lot of people just don't don't see it's a uh, don't see it's a problem i mean it's, yes. they, they just say oh these people like they want they, they're leftists they want a, they want a welfare state they want to end the war they just you know don't mention that they also um you know they also I think trans people should be forced to uh, detransition then what uh and you know and, and that xi, xi jinping is a pretty cool guy kind of thing it's like because the left has historically been isolated people don't want to make waves they don't want to uh they, they don't want to because the left has become this kind of social movement rather than a political movement it's a movement where we all like swap these stories and like use these aesthetics to make us feel better about each other people don't want to make start fights within that movement even if some of the really popular people within this movement right. are You're bringing right in ideological poison it's very very hard to stand up against the popular kids and uh perhaps that's a start you know when you're saying people let's talk about trans folks you know uh are, are, are looking around and that they're on the same side of of the street or or on, in the same line as as nazis or or reactionary then yeah i mean that's the project isn't it yes you no know, that's the that's yes. the that's the populist pro whether you want to you know dress steve it up bannon's 10 percent steve bannon's 10 percent whether you want to dress it up as as a thousand page fourth position theory thing or something as steve bannon says on his podcast I think yeah. that's the project and perhaps understanding that and recognizing yeah. it um, yeah. is, is a first. Also, another thing that you, when you were speaking, I thought of the, the last episode I just published was a, a Ukrainian and Kiev historian mm. researcher. Mm. And, you know, he brought up a good point too. We were talking about reactionary right in politics. And I made the yep. statement of, well, you know, when, when in times of crisis, they can gain power kind of like what we were talking about, you know, and then when their utility no longer serves a purpose and that crisis goes away, people kind of recognize them as being disgusting and say, now you go, you, you go away. And, you know, he said, well, stop, wait, maybe, but also in many countries that doesn't happen because once the election occurs, it's the last election. Or it takes 40 years, like yeah. Spain, yeah. you know, they're just like, uh, you know, the fashion you know the francoist movement you know kind of yes ran out of steam after 40 years and then they kind of brought brought back bourgeois democracy with like right let's let's never talk about this again let's let's pretend the last 40 years didn't happen and 
Unfortunately, yes. Yes. Uh, the planet might not have 40 years. That's I mean, it, it's what not as if continuously weighs on my mind. It's not as if the United States isn't d- j- didn't just experience this, right? Mm. With the last president transition yes. of power, right? Yes, exactly. Maybe, maybe that's the point moving forward. That you know, if we we know the enemy, we know what to do, and it's not as if it's something that you can just there. There's a there's there's a it's a dire situation in in many mm. places. Um, yeah. I think some people don't really want maybe to acknowledge how close, even in, you know, something like the United States, how close we were, but yeah, I'm going to say it's like real denialism to some degree. It's like, a, it's you, you know, that, that refusal, coping mechanism. To, yeah, refusal to believe that, 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 that um, their refusal to believe that fascism is something qualitatively distinctive from even conservative bourgeois democracy and, they may, they, as I say, the mainstream communist movement made precisely that mistake in the 30s, and look where it ended up, World War. Right. I could talk forever, but for now, I'm going to link your articles, um, you. the Red Brown Zombie, to this uh, yeah. to this video and, and the audio that we put out, too. Yeah. And this was therapeutic for me. <laughs> it was good to hear from somebody who is very knowledgeable in this, but also it was good to commune with somebody with perhaps some shared empathy and, and observations as myself too. As we said, it can, especially on the internet, it can, it can seem as if that's not the case, but Daphne, thank you for coming on. I, I, I really thank appreciate you. it. Thank you. Let's keep in touch. Let's build that new international. Sounds good. All right. <laughs> Bye.